Hello everyone, welcome to this video. My name is Chirag Dhal and I welcome you all on the behalf of Finite Labs. In this video, we are going to dig deeper inside the IP addresses. We are going to learn more about IP version 4 addresses. So we'll be having some introduction to IPv4 subnet in this particular video. So in the last video, we learned how IP addresses are um, used, what are the different classes of them. Now we are going to talk more about the same. So when we talk about IP version 4 addresses, we have two different types of IP addresses. We have private IPs and we have the public IPs. Now how do they differ? Let's under understand that. The private IPs scope is local. That means it can be used for local communications. If I have five PCs with me and I want them uh, like to communicate with each other, I want these five PCs to have communication with each other, then I can simply put some private IP on each of them. I can keep them inside the same network and they'll be able to communicate. But let's say I, I want these five PCs to communicate with the internet. I want them to be reach out to the internet. I want them to be communications with another another organization devices, which is let's say in some other state, then I would need a public IP address because the scope of public IP is global. Then we can say the private IP can be given by any administrator. Like if I am owning a place where I have five different PCs, I can just simply go on to each PC and can put the private IP address, right? But when it comes to public IP, which can simply be used for making the communication with the internet, then that is done by the service providers. That is how you get the internet connections as well, right? Then in local area network, we have the private IP addresses as we have been talking about the example having five PCs. So that somehow makes a local area network, right? And we can simply use the private IP addresses there. But when it comes to WAN communications, when it comes to making devices communicate with the internet, then we need a uh, public IP. Private IP is free of cost, can be used anytime, anywhere on any device. And public IP is not free, you have to pay for them. Then these are unregistered IP addresses. That means these, these are not getting registered anywhere. But when we talk about public IP addresses, these are uh, these are registered ones and you have to register yourself to get the public IP from AINA. Like if you are getting the whole slot, then you have to reach out to AINA. Otherwise, your uh, internet service provider would help you with your public IP address. Then the ranges for private IP are like these. You have three different ranges. Like the first range is there for class A, which is from 10.0.0.0 to 10.255.255.255, which is your basically 10.00 network slash 8 network. Then you have 172.16.0.0 to 172.31.255.255, which is a network of let's say 172.16.0.0 slash 12. Your class A provides you this range, your class B provides you this range. Then you have another range from class C, which is for 192.168.0.0 slash 16. So 192.168.0.0 to 192.168.255.255. Then public IP addresses are the rest of the addresses, um, like 170. Like you can see here, 17.5.7.1, uh, 24, 64.35.9, and so on. So this is how public and private IP address are different from each other. Then there is this subnet mask. A subnet mask is used to divide an IP address into two parts. These two parts are the network and the host. One part identifies the host, that is the computer, and the other, other part identifies the network to which the particular address belongs to. Now we have some default subnet mask, which are for class A, it is 255.0.0.0. Then for class B, it is 255.255.0.0. Then for class C, it is 255.255.255.0. Now, in this case, in the class A, we have one part as the network and the rest of them as the host. Then the two parts are there for the network, then two for the host, three for the network and one for the host. The same can be seen here. So we can say that subnet mask is somewhere a representation of 
network bits and the host bits distribution inside any IP address. Then we have some different CIDR values when it comes to uh, modifying the subnet mask. We use classless interdomain routing. We can basically divide a small uh, divide a network into smaller parts by using these modified values. So we have some values like slash 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, like that. And you have some defined values for them. For, for slash 25, it is 128. For slash 26, it is 192, 224, 240, 248, 252, 254, and then finally 255. We cannot exceed that, right? Then the binary conversion is also given here for these values and the subnet mask which you will be using would be like this. We will talk about how this is calculated and we will also see some examples here. Then we will also uh, talk a little about why do we need this. So why do we like there are two different methods of doing subnetting. The first one is your FLSM then the second one is your VLSM. FLSM stands for fixed length subnet mask then VLSM stands for variable length subnet mask. It is better to use variable length subnet mask which means having different subnets with different lengths. That means there can be the first subnet can be of 120 addresses then the second subnet can be of let's say 50 addresses. So these are the variable length subnets right. But if we talk about FLSM then all of the subnets will have the same lengths. That means if the first subnet is having let's say 64 addresses then the second, third, fourth all of them will have 64 addresses in each of them. So there are some benefits of using VLSM and implementing VLSM over FLSM which are like it improves the network performance and speed, it reduces the chances of network congestion, it boosts, boosts the network security, controls the network growth, it eases the administration and you can say the management and then it also conserves the address space. So it is better to uh, basically use VLSM over we can say FLSM. Then the next thing which we need to talk about would be uh, like how subnetting works and how it is calculated. So let's see some examples of that. So let's say we are given with some network which is 200.10.1.0 slash 24. This is a normal class C network, right? This can provide me 256 addresses. As I know that the maximum addresses I can get out of a class C address would be 256. Out of which the usable addresses would be 256 minus 2. Because two addresses are going to be reserved for the network ID and the broadcast ID. That gives me 254 as the usable addresses. So the maximum I can get is 254. But the actual requirement which I have is of let's say 50 only. So do I need to use the whole network? I mean yes I can, I can use the whole network but that will lead to a wastage of around 204 addresses, right? So how can we reduce this wastage? How can we try to minimize this wastage? We can do that using subnetting. So let's understand how can we basically do subnetting in such cases. So we have to use some values which can be simply like in the form of 2 raised to the power 0 to 2 raised to the power depending upon what is the requirement. So I'll begin from 2 raised to the power 0 which gives me 1. Then I go ahead with 2 raised to the power 1 which gives me 2. 2 raised to the power 2 this is 4. 2 raised to the power 3 8. 2 raised to the power 4 16. 2 raised to the power 5 32. 2 raised to the power 6, 64, then 2 raised to the power 7, 128. Let's see if we are able to fulfill the requirements within the available values, otherwise we will keep it extended, extending. So we have a requirement of 50 users, right? We just need 50 addresses. So I have to look for a value which can cover 50 addresses and is also the closest one to the 50. So we can simply see that 2 raised to the power 6 which gives you 64 would be the best one to use. So how do you do subnetting now? We know that the network and host bits in a class C address are distributed like this. We have 24 bits for the network and uh, 8 bits are for the host. If you remember the distribution was like this right n dot n dot n dot h. That means 8 plus 8 plus 
8 for the network then 8 for the host. So I have just written the same here in this table format. Now out of these available 8 bits for a 50 for a requirement of 50 addresses I would only need 2 raised to the power 6 that means 6 bits. So I will just subtract this 6 and will give this extra 2 to the network part. Now what was subnetting let's get to the previous slide and read it again. It was about borrowing bits depending upon the situations right. Now we have 26 bits inside the network part and 6 bits inside the host part. If I write it again then it would be simply like this 26 and the host bits are going to be 6. Now I have modified the subnet mask. Earlier we had a slash 24 subnet which was simply if I talk about the default subnet then it was 255.255.255 dot 0 right but now I have to calculate it for 26 bits so I'll just quickly get back to that table and we'll check what value do I have for 26 so for slash 26 we have 255 255 255 192 right we have the value as 192 so we will use the same and we can say that we were able to submit the mask so now the new subnet mask would be 255 dot 255 dot 255 dot 192 if i use this as the subnet mask while i am configuring the ip addresses then i can limit my wastage to something closer to like 14 addresses because when i use this subnet mask my range get reduced to 64 addresses instead of 256 addresses understand it like that Earlier, if we were using the default one, we had the range of around 254 addresses, right? And if we use the same, then we are somewhere wasting around 200 addresses. But now when I have modified the subnet mask, my range got reduced to 64 addresses. And now the wastage is of maybe around 14, which is 10 to 15 addresses. So that is something which we can afford. But a wastage of 200 addresses for a requirement of 50 addresses is not something which we should be looking forward to, right? So subnetting would be, I would say, is a great thing when it comes to uh, manipulating the subnet mask. Then I'll just also show you how we can simply calculate this new subnet mask in case you don't have such tables with you. So you can use the formula which is used for converting any IP address into the binary form which is something like this 2 raised to the power 7, 2 raised to the power 6, 2 raised to the power 5, 2 raised to the power 4, 2 raised to the power 3, 2 raised to the power 2, 2 raised to the power 1. I'll just erase this then 2 raised to the power 0. I'll just write the values for these. It is 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2 and 1. So we have to calculate it for slash 26, right? So let's understand it again. Slash 26 means the first octet will have 8 bits. Then the second octet will also have 8 bits. Then the third one will also have the 8 bits. This means 8 plus 8 plus 8 is 24. I, I, have, I have to calculate it for the additional two bits which I borrowed from the host part here, right? We have borrowed these additional two bits for the network part, right? So we have to calculate it for that. Now two bits means 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. This is how you represent two bits. In case we get three here, then we will keep this third bit also as one. But that's not the case currently. So let's just keep it back to zero. So this is how you convert the, like you can try to calculate the last octet. Now, when you basically get the value for these binary bits, you will see that you get 128 plus 64, which is simply 192. That's how you can also calculate the subnet mask. Otherwise you have the table, right? So this is how basically it is done. In case you don't want to use the table, you want to do the calculations manually, then you also know what the formula is to calculate things. So I hope you guys were able to understand this and you enjoyed the video. 
try doing some more examples try taking some different requirements just like i have taken 50 you can try it with 100 let's say try performing such questions and see if you are able to do them and i hope you guys enjoyed the video and liked the video so i'll see you in some other video till then take care bye bye thank you so much for your time Thank <laughs> you.